2.5 lakh rupees per minute. That's the cost of running India's parliament. All of that went down the drain for the last 12 to 13 days. Why? Thanks to this. We want the Prime Minister no, to no, come and give a statement. Nothing will go on record. It's not a point of order. What is the point of order? Nothing will go on record. I'm surprised. What is the point of order? This is no point of order. विपक्ष ने बोला है तो इसका अर्थ होता है कि उन्होंने स्वतः स्वीकार किया है कि जो सदन के अनुपस्थित सदस्य उनमें से कोई है हमारी तरफ से किसी सदस्य का नाम नहीं लिया हम सिर्फ इस चर्चा का आग्रह कर रहे हैं मनोज झा मनोज झा मनोज झा मनोज झा आज जब मैं सदन की ओर आ रहा था माननीय सभापति महोदय मुझे बीजेपी के साथियों ने कह दिया कि बेकार कोई फायदा नहीं है आज हम सदन को नहीं चलने देंगे जो कश्मीर को अलग करना चाहता है उसके साथ आपके क्या संबंध है इसी तरह से सोरोस ने मनमोहन सिंह के साथ मीटिंग की मनमोहन सिंह के साथ मीटिंग की Sorry, I am really sorry. If I have heart, I, 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 I am sorry. I am said I am sorry. Please, please address. Please come to the bill. I did not want to hurt. Please come to the bill. Tell him, please come to the bill. I am sorry for that. Now, sir, now they come. What I want talking about the central government that response. Try to respond. Huh? Please, 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 please. Shouting, sloganeering, protests, walkouts. All of this ensured that 2.5 lakh rupees of hard-earned taxpayers' money was completely wasted, courtesy to billionaires. Gautam Adani and George Soros. The Congress accuses the BJP of favoring chairman of the Adani group. A few days later, it was the ruling party that created ruckus. The BJP alleged ties between Soros, Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi. It termed this so-called nexus anti-national. Each has accused the other of stalling the parliament over these two issues. Hello and welcome to Simply Put. I am Shubham Chahan. Let's get started. Now, we've already discussed the worrying trend of parliaments falling productivity under the Modi government and even an openly partisan speaker. You can watch both these videos by clicking on the link in the description below. In this video, let's look at both India and NDA's latest strategy that is dominating House proceedings. First, the India Alliance. For starters, the Congress by far is the largest opposition party in both the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. In the Lok Sabha, it has 99 MPs and in the Rajya Sabha, it has 27. Basically, the largest voice in the opposition, like I said. So it wasn't an entire surprise when the party went hammer and tongs on the indictment of Gautam Adani in the US. Prosecutors alleged that Gautam Adani and some of his associates bribed Indian officials to secure contracts related to a solar power plant project. Rahul Gandhi and the Congress, a party that has raised the issue of crony capitalism frequently, found fresh ammunition to go after the industrialist. The Gandhi siblings, Priyanka and Rahul, led the charge in the Lok Sabha. From mock interviews outside parliament, tote bags, Congress did manage to grab eyeballs on this issue, even t-shirts for that matter. But is this strategy being accepted? Not entirely. A report in the Indian Express says a section of Congress MPs, particularly those in the Lok Sabha, believe the House should resume normal business. The interruptions should stop, that is. They argued that this will give them a chance to hold the NDA government accountable using the question hour and discussions and raise important issues during the zero hour. A section of Congress's Lok Sabha MPs also believed that the party strategy was increasingly being dictated by Rajya Sabha MPs. In fact, here's what one Congress leader was quoted as saying, one Congress MP. Parliament is a unique forum in which only parliamentarians get to record their views for posterity. Giving up that opportunity is actually a betrayal of the electorate. These protests are neither noticed nor yielding any impact on the ground. Issues we seem to be harping on absolutely have no resonance with the common man. Another MP that was quoted saying, 
If you do not have a decent record on raising issues in parliament, we will be asked questions by our voters. My voters are already asking, why am I wasting time in Delhi? And you can see where that is coming from. While there is no denying that the Adani indictment is a very serious issue, one that requires a thorough and impartial probe, several leaders within the Congress party believe that calling the government on this issue alone is not enough. In fact, recent state elections showed that harping on just the Adani issue will not fetch you votes. Just targeting Gautam Adani will not fetch you votes. In fact, in the India Alliance too, the likes of Trinamool Congress, Samajwadi Party, consciously stayed away from Congress's Adani protests in the last few days. Reports say Congress's allies weren't too happy with the disruptions by the Grand Old Party in Parliament, even outside the Parliament through their protests. Many allies in the opposition wanted the House to function. Issues like Sambal, Manipur, inflation are on the list of some of the India Alliance partners, where much of the focus should actually be. Speaking of focus or the lack of it, let's come to the ruling party. If the Congress had an Adani jibe ready, the BJP had George Soros to counter. In recent days, NDA MPs, especially in the Rajya Sabha, were up on their feet, targeting the Congress one MP at a time. Interestingly, while in Rajya Sabha, the chairman refused to even entertain the word Adani, let alone the indictment. On the contrary, BJP and its allies had a free run in the Rajya Sabha, despite Vice President and Chairman Jagdeep Dhankar rejecting their notices altogether. Mind you, the ruling party has a lot to answer, a lot of issues to answer. And even when they have answered, it hasn't answered adequately. That's the government. In several of the written answers the government gave, it ended just saying no data and moved on. And these were important issues the country faces, the questions that were asked of the government. In fact, a debate on 75 years of India's constitution was expected to resolve the logjam at least partially if not fully and get things moving. Yesterday we saw fiery speeches from both sides in the Lok Sabha. But amidst such an intense and important discussion on the Indian constitution, where was the Prime Minister of India. Enjoying a cruise ride in Uttar Pradesh's Prayagraj, far away from the parliament where his government has a lot of answering to do. The Prime Minister will only come to Parliament today to give his comments in this debate. The BJP's latest diversionary tactics and refusal to take the opposition together is arguably a fresh low. At a time when channels of communication between the ruling and treasury benches is shrinking, the onus really is more on the ruling party than the opposition to ensure Parliament functions smoothly. And for the opposition to realize that they have a lot of issues to corner the government than just one industrialist. After all, the temple of democracy is the place where the voices and issues of people have to be raised and not just become a battleground for petty political fights. That's all we have for this episode of Simply Put. Thanks for watching. Do let us know what you think in the comments below. And of course, subscribe to HW News English for more such videos. ahead with our cutting edge news app instantly access the latest shorts in just 1 minute and breaking news in just 50 words download now for a smarter faster news experience